Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, former BYU basketball head coach, friend of the program, overall outstanding college basketball analyst, Steve Cleveland. Coach, great to have you back on the show. Hi, guys. Good morning. It is a good morning, and it's a good morning because we uh, recently discussed Yoli Childs coming back to BYU. What does that announcement and that revelation mean for the future, the immediate future of BYU basketball? Well, you have the most improved player in the program coming back. You know, you start looking at uh, his first year and his second year, and the differentials are incredible. I mean, from nine points a game to 17.8, uh, stayed with about the same field goal percentage, improved his three-point shooting uh, from making none as a freshman to making 15. Uh, just overall free throws, assists, rebounding, everything that he did, number of block shots, everything was up plus. Came off a great sophomore season. Uh, he brings back leadership. He brings back a commitment to winning the WCC. I heard some of his comments and uh, about getting back to the NC Toy Tournament. So that experience going there and uh, testing the waters a little bit, I think probably did a great deal for his confidence and knows some of the things that he's going to have to do to get better. You coached Paul George in college. Uh, what's, the, what's the experience like for a coach and a coaching staff when you deal with guys that – dip their toes in the waters. And in the case of Paul, I think he just went right, and you had others. But Yoli Childs had a conversation with Dave Rose, and he wanted to, uh, you know, do certain things to elevate his stock. How do you manage the, the needs of the team versus the needs of an individual like that? You know what? I, I think it can be a real positive thing. And I, I think that anytime a young man comes, you've got to support him. Uh, and we've talked about this before on the show. I mean, one of the things that you do in recruiting young men is you help them to get to the next level. I mean, those are conversations that you're having. But it can be a really positive thing between a head coach and the players and how he handles that with the other players. And, and, and it's all about relationships and focusing, as you said, how do we reconcile the, the team goals versus the individual goals. And you can do that. And I think one of the things that will happen this summer is that Yoli's probably got some instructions and some things he can do better. He's going to come back really motivated, really committed, and the coaching staff should be really excited about it and helping him. And I think that's where the relationships get stronger, where everybody sees that, hey, this coach has my best interest at heart, and, but at the same time, we're still trying to win championships. And you can reconcile both and do it very easily. It just needs to be something where both coaches and players understand each other and understand that, hey, this is going to be for the betterment of the team. We want to do things that are going to help you as well. So I think it's a win-win and a very positive situation. Former head coach of BYU basketball, Steve Cleveland, with us on BYU Sports Nation. Last week I said with Yoli coming back, I feel like, let's say, BYU goes from 21 or 22 wins to around the 25 or 26 mark. I think he's worth three more wins. I think he's that good of a player, Coach. Uh, am I crazy to think that one player can make that much of a difference in the win-loss category? No, because he gets to the free throw line. I mean, he shot 76 more free throws this year. Uh, his ability to rebound the ball at almost nine rebounds a game. Uh, he's distributing the ball because he's drawing the attention of sometimes two and three defenders. He's allowing others to get wide open. No, there's no question about it. That you don't want to think about the year without him. <laughs> uh, having him there uh, puts them in a situation where they have a dominant inside post score and now somebody that can step out and stretch and hit the little stretch three. And I know that's probably something he'll be uh, working on during the course of the off season, but, no, having Yoli come back uh, is is a huge difference maker. He's a difference maker on this team, and uh, protecting the rim, rebounding it, scoring inside, now getting to the free throw line. What role do you see Nick Emery playing on this team without Elijah Bryant in the backcourt? Uh, does he kind of fill that space to a degree? No, I think he does. I, I think Nick is going to come back with a really, really good mindset. He's had to go through some tough, difficult things in his life personally. He's had a lot of time to reflect and think about it. I know he's been working on his game, uh, working on his body, and, and working on his, his mind as well. So I, I actually think he comes back, has a huge addition to the team. I think that it'll be one of being a great teammate, one of helping others. And, uh, and, and you know what? When you're away from the game, you don't take the game for granted anymore. I think he's going to have a respect for the game and a, and a respect for his teammates in ways that he's never had before. With Nick Emery back in play, joining T.J. Haas and Yoli Childs as well, where do you feel like 
this BYU team has the biggest hole? What do they need to shore up to get better compared to the last two years? Well, I don't think you can have enough people that can shoot the basketball. You know, one of the things last year is that BYU did not shoot the three ball real well. And uh, even TJ, who had had an amazing freshman year, kind of dropped about 10 percentage points. Zach Selyus, who was considered to be a, you know an outstanding three-point shooter. I think Dalton Nixon can be a really good three-point shooter. I think that they need to shoot the three ball better. I mean, that's something that BYU has always been known for, and, uh, and it, it gets them separation in, in close games. So I think the three ball is something that they need to focus on. I think that the decision-making offensively has much improved over two years ago. I think that they'll make the shot selection. Those were never issues in games last year. I think defensively they were better. I think they'll continue to be better. I think they understand as a unit and as a program that how important defensively it, it is going to be. I think they'll play with a little more pace. I think, honestly, at home especially, that they can play with more pace, especially where they have an altitude advantage and people are on the road and it's a, it's a tough place to play. But uh, I, I, would, I would say that three-point shooting is going to be really important to continue to focus on that and then sustaining the defensive end of things. And, uh, and where they've grown, continue to grow. How much better of the three-point shooting performance are we talking about BYU needing? They, they were 34.7% last year. How much does that need to, right, to raise up? You know, I, I think they need to be in the 38 to 40%. I mean, that's what's going to make, that's going to make the difference between them winning a WCC championship or winning a WCC tourney or getting to the NC2 tournament. And I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I'm – pretty certain that in the day of the three ball that that BYU teams that have gone to the tournament have shot the ball well in the 38 39 percent and I think that with coach Rose and looking at his teams over the years you know they've always kind of been known as a great three-point shooting team and that's an area that they're going to need to really work on and, and, and oftentimes it's just a matter of a little bit of confidence spending the time these are good shooters it's not like there's you've got three or four who, who shots are broke I think it's just a matter of knocking a few down having it happen within the system. I also think sometimes that getting it in the early, early in the shot clock in transition where you have an advantage, designated guys have the green light, I think that can help uh, increase confidence as well. There are some talented players that maybe didn't play to their potential as, as we've been discussing, but what dormant offensive player could erupt this next season? Well, I, I mean, you've got somebody that's been in the program and – and, and Dastrup that, that has the capabilities of doing it. And I think for him, it's as much mental as it is physical. I think his commitment to the weight room, his commitment to just conditioning, his commitment to having the right mindset. I mean, he is a young man that has lots and lots of skills offensively, and, and, and they need him to make that next step. I, you, you saw him play. I did not see him play. I, I understand that. Devin Baxter is a really, really athletic young man that could have an immediate impact in this program, whether it's scoring or not, I'm not sure. I think someone, too, that between Dalton, Nixon, and, and even Bergerson, who didn't get a lot of time, those are young men that could step up and be a surprise. Dalton Nixon wouldn't be a surprise to me. Uh, I, I believe that he can be a, an integral part of this team, and uh, if he's healthy, he could have a huge impact. Coach, clearly Dave Rose and his staff got the message from the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee that they need to ramp up the schedule. So much so that now we're wondering, is the non-conference schedule that BYU has put together for the 2018-19 season too tough? What do you think about it? No, you know what? I think you have to make a commitment at some point or time. I mean, hey, they're in a league now that generally you're going to win 13, 12 to 14 games. Now, that, that doesn't happen very often. However, I do believe that with the improvement of San Diego, UOP, uh, and, and others, and then San Francisco, I think St. Mary's will be down a little bit. I do believe the league will be tougher this year. There's, there will be more parity in the league. Younger teams are now a year older. So it will be a more competitive WCC. I think you have to make a statement to the NC2A committee that, hey, we're willing to do this because we've been in the tournament, and, and BYU has a long history of being in the tournament. Uh, and, and certainly there are some difficult, challenging games. But those are also kinds of games that if you go on the road and win those games can get you locked into the tournament. And then if, even if, if you lose those games, it may be the reason you beat a Gonzaga or you beat somebody in a big-time game at the end of the year in a tournament. So I think there's nothing but positives. 
you do have to be careful about scheduling. I mean, <laughs> I, I remember uh, uh, learning very often in my coaching career from veteran coaches is that you have to be really careful about the schedule. But I think the message is being real clear now from the NC2A tournament that, no, nobody wants to schedule themselves out of a job. But at the end of the day, scheduling along the board, not just with BYU, but around the country. I mean, how bad do you think St. Mary's felt winning 27, 28 games and having just an amazing year and doesn't go to the tournament? So the, the NC2A has spoken loud and clear. You've got to make some adjustments, take care of it. But uh, if it doesn't help you in terms of getting a W early on, it may well help you later on getting a W at a really important time like the WCC tournament. Coach, great stuff. If you were shooting threes for BYU, the percentage would go up. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just wish I just wish we'd have had the three ball. <laughs> would have changed your life. Well, it yes, changed sir. my life. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach, thanks for the time. Great being with you guys.